नमस्कार गुड आफ्टरनून वेलकम टू दि साउथ एशियन ऑनलाइन लिटररी कॉन्फ्रेंस ज्वाइंटली ऑर्गेनाइज बाय साहित्य अकादमी एंड द फाउंडेशन ऑफ सार्क राइटर एंड लिटरेचर दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस वाज इनोग्रेटेड यस्टरडे ऑन 6 अक्टूबर 2021 एट 10 एएम एंड इट हैज 25 डिफरेंट सेशंस ऑफ रीडिंग्स एंड डिस्कशंस टिल 9th अक्टूबर 2021 This is the seventh session of paper presentation being chaired by Dr. Renuka Singh from India. We have two other participants also, uh, Sri Sanuka, Adiri Manna Mohanty from Sri Lanka, and Sri uh, Daso Dorji Jadhul from Bhutan. Uh, may I request uh, Dr. Renuka Singh, who is chairing the session, to proceed to further proceedings. and uh, I, i also welcome uh, ms uh, ajit kaur who is uh, uh, with us thank you so a very good afternoon to everyone uh, first of all i'd like to thank uh, sahit academy and mrs ajit kaur of foswal uh, for inviting us uh, to this uh, conference and the session in particular and uh, i would also like to welcome the speakers from sri lanka and bhutan so uh, we are supposed to be introducing our own selves may i now invite mr janoka adiri mana mohoti from sri lanka to please make his presentation uh, on my times my writings as well as he, he, he is not with us uh, now Uh, kindly invite uh, from bhutan i see so uh, may i invite mr dasho doji dradhul from bhutan who will be talking about his own book so please introduce yourself before you present your paper thank you thank you very much mr janika singh uh, uh this is uh, ajit kaur and mr uh, from sahiti academia and first first and foremost i like to take this opportunity in thanking mr ajit kaur of foswa and sahiti sahita academy for giving us this opportunity uh, to be participating in this very uh, important uh, and a popular uh, event uh, uh, in the world of literature now coming to myself i am presently working as the director general for tourism council of bhutan and Uh, actually i really don't fit uh, in this group because uh, what i've done so far in terms of writing is i just uh, accidentally uh, published one book uh, uh, is a fiction book actually novel called es escapes awakening so this is the only as far as published work this is the only work that i've done and this was actually uh, as i said is an accidental in the sense that before when i was working in ministry of agriculture earlier i was working in ministry of agriculture for almost 10 years and i mean for 15 years that time we have to do a lot of office related traveling into the re remote areas so in one of those trips i got inspired i mean i was just taking notes uh, of my travel uh, during that time and then after uh, having made that trip and then came back to office uh, in the capital city and i was trying to compile put together my notes then suddenly i mean i got inspired that maybe uh, this should uh, some things are very interesting the, that notes that i've taken and maybe i will uh, convert that into a book so then after almost like 7 years it took me about 7 years and then finally uh, this uh, turned turn, turn into this book i mean basically this was inspired from my own uh, real trip but uh, this is a fiction uh, but this book basically uh, as the name says i mean the, the title is escapes uh, awakening basically if i talk about little bit of the title or what it means is escapes basically for the readers i am expecting that the readers when they read this they actually go uh, transport to a, another world i mean not necessarily where they are staying i mean especially for the expat readers for the foreign readers for bhutanese it is more or less that that may not be relevant but especially for the foreign readers because then the reason is this book uh, gives a kind of a through through a main protagonist so uh, is a female is a is a woman and it covers from 1970 to 2037 actually the, the book and it spans about three generation of a female headed uh, family uh, the main protagonist as i said starts with a uh, single uh, 
uh, uh, mother, a parent, uh, uh, and then of course uh, it uh, continues into the next uh, next three generation. And in terms of the content, while well, it revolves around the uh, that family, but it also in the process it also talks about uh, Bhutan's culture, tradition, history, including our rituals, contemporary uh, times, and also the transition into democracy. As you know, that Bhutan trans transition from a monarchy into a, uh, to a democracy in 2008. So it also talks about that, and also it benches into future uh, in, in, in some aspects. So therefore, for a foreigner, uh, this is a very, I would say, uh, a, a good uh, uh, book to know a little bit more about Bhutan. And of course, I also like to make a disclaimer that some of the events or some of the uh, things that have been described in this book uh, are no, not necessarily true these days. Maybe now things have changed, actually. A lot of things have changed over the years because, as I said, this book starts from in 1970. I mean, that is a long, long time ago when development has not really picked up uh, uh, in our country. Now, in terms of country, is that now, uh, in terms of uh, 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 what is the best thing or what is the good thing uh, for me, especially as a writer or as an author of this book, uh, I'd like to share this. Uh, basically, I feel one is, of course, because of this book, I, I mean, uh, I'm uh, also categorized under this writer, though uh, though I already made a disclaimer, I actually don't really fit into this uh, August uh, group here. But still then, I take this as an, uh, as an honor and a blessing for me. And second is, many readers of my books, they actually question my gender or my sex. They are asking me if I'm really a male, uh, because, the story is written from a female point of view. As I said, the main protagonist is a woman, and they are saying because uh, looks like I, the way I've written, I have given uh, gone into the real depths and the details of a woman's life. So therefore, they are really questioning uh, if if I am a really uh, a male. They are suspecting maybe I am a female uh, author. Anyway, so this is uh, this is something that I find it very interesting for me. And then the second, third. Uh, Thing that good about this, I, I mean, I feel good about writing this book is, I feel some of the things that I wrote in this book are already uh, coming true, and some have already taken place. Uh, now I will give some uh, some examples. Now that would basically mean so maybe I'm I'm a George or or Orwell or a Nostradamus in the making, uh, you know, because I, I'll share a couple of things in this book. My book was published; it came into print in 2013. Uh, it was uh, released on 2013 May, and our second parliamentary election result came in 2013 uh, August, so uh, much ahead of, of the election result. In this book, as I said earlier, we also I also discussed about the transition to our democracy. I talked about the second election, and I also talked about the results. And interestingly, the results of that second parliamentary election actually matches quite well with the way I have actually projected in my book, including I, because uh, uh, here in my book, uh, uh, I have made uh, three female minister, and which is for the first time. I mean, we never had a female minister in the past, three female minister and three women uh, governors, district governors. And it so happened that in this, uh, after the, the party won, and the name also seems to be quite, uh, quite uh, similar. So that is one. Second is, in that book also, I, I talk about, you know, recommending or just expressing that one particular uh, uh, personality, a woman, I was just expressing as an author from, from this protagonist view, maybe she should be given some recognition. And interestingly, that same personality got to recognized for the work that uh, she has done uh, from the highest level. Uh, from our golden throne, she received some uh, meritorious um, uh, 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 medal, and that is also after the uh, event. And then, of course, the third one is in the book. Again, I talk about uh, a center. Uh, you know, Bhutan is famous for uh, gross national happiness. So I talk about establishing a gross national happiness center in one part of a country. And it is so interesting that later on, maybe in 2015 or 16, this, such a center has been also established uh, in that place. So, so there are a couple of things that which actually I talk about, discuss in the book as a you know, part of the story, and it has it is already happening. So maybe I'll I'll stop here. 
uh, I really don't want to take much time as uh, uh, we are limited. So th these are all that I, uh, I have to say. So thank you very much for this opportunity. I think we have time since there are only two speakers and can't we get some more time? Okay. Because we have the question till one o'clock. It's from this book. Sorry? Can we read this? You better tell from this book. Yeah. I think you, you have uh, another seven, eight minutes, sir. Okay. Then the, if I continue, now some things are here to happen. Uh, as I said, there are again, when I read, so read myself, some excerpts from your book. Pardon? You some excerpts from your book. Okay, but uh, before that, since I have some time, I just wanted to share uh, again, express that in this book, again, uh, I have a alcohol and a drug rehabilitation center established in Bhutan, and which is very famous, uh, I mean, which becomes very famous in the book. And patients from our sub regions, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, they come to Bhutan to get uh, rehabilitated in our center here. So I feel this is something yet to yet to happen. So like this, there are so many other things again in this book that could happen. I mean, uh, of course, I have uh, 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 written uh, as a part of the story. Okay, then I will I will uh, read uh, maybe. Okay, uh, just a random chapter. I'm picking a chapter 38, and the title is uh, Chudzom, which is a Bhutanese word. It's translated as a, in, into, in English as a confluence of river. So Chudzom means a confluence of river. So it is a place, actually, name of a place. Uh, hello, hello, Sharma. Hello, um, uh, replies uh, Sharma. Did you send the trucks to Finseling? So Finseling is another place. Yes, um, um, um means a respect for a lady. So this is a conversation between a truck driver and uh, uh, the, the one lady here. Yes, um, two trucks have already reached Finseling and I got a call from Yada just a while ago. Then um says, good, can you send one to Pachuka immediately. Pachuka Zongda wants to transport stones from his quarry to private construction site. Don't charge him, it is complimentary. Okay, um, I will send the tripper. It has been idle. So by, so by 1996, Cheche, I mean, Cheche is the main protagonist uh, of this book. She is the heroine uh, of this book. So by 1996, Cheche had carved herself a reputation as a successful businesswoman in just five years with Dasho Sanam's support. Now, she was born in 1970. So, by, by now, by 1996, she's already become an established uh, woman. I mean, this is uh, uh, there. And she ran a trans transport business with a fleet of 10 trucks. And Mr. Sharma, a shrewd Indian, managed it. So, I don't know. I mean, how 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 you can uh, uh, relate to this uh, this because uh, I I've not really uh, selected any. Uh, I didn't expect to read read this. So maybe maybe I'll read something different. Whatever you like. Okay. I will, I will read the, the last chapter, epilogue. Okay. It was a beautiful spring morning in 2037. Kezang and a group of Americans were welcomed with a light drizzle as they alighted from a dragon look alike chopper at the CCC private helipad in Changwa in Bumtang. 
Once everyone was out of the aircraft, Kezang gestured to them to gather near her, which took a while as the Americans were absorbed in photography. But she was in no hurry. Anyway, it was very noisy with the chopper's blade still in motion. Kezang addressed the group when the chopper went silent. Very nice. The noise has stopped. I hate the sound. I'm sure you have soundless choppers in America. I must get one, she jested. Well, my dear friends, welcome to beautiful Valley of Guntang, the Valley of Temples and Happiness. I thought it is also the Valley of Beautiful Girls. Boom means girls, right? An American guy joked. Yes, Lennon, you are absolutely right. How did I miss that? Valley of beautiful girls. Boom Tham. Kezang agreed. Please uh, uh, stop me uh, whenever you want to stop me. Okay. okay. Instantly, the Americans greeted her words with rapturous applause. Thank you. But historically, this valley is also known as a valley of ghosts. People from other parts of the country address the local people as Dre Bumtaps, which means ghost Bumtaps. People of Bumtang are known as Bumtaps. Unfortunately, there are no ghosts anymore, not a single one. They are extinct. They are history. However, the good news is that the valley is still adorned with beautiful girls, as Lennon has pointed out. To us, this is not a good news at all. What about handsome boys and men? I hope you are also, I hope they are also in plenty. Bonnie joked, an American blonde. Of course, they are also in plenty. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. The last three, Mr. Bhutan, including this year's, are from this valley. So girls, you are ready to meet them. Are you ready to meet them? As expected, the guests were further amused. There was an applause once again. So that lady was talking to a group of American tourists, actually. I must. Uh, I think, Dorjila, uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, presentation. But since you are talking about Bhumtang, can I just ask you a couple of questions regarding Bhumtang? Oh, yes. Uh, um, so you, you have been to Bhumtang? I have been to Bhumtang. And oh, I see. For me, two things were very interesting. You are talking about these beautiful women, but for me, the meditation uh, place of uh, Padma Sambhava, yes. I think that was very significant. And there was another monastery where, you know, they have those chains and you have to wear those chains to oh, do yes. circumambulation. So yes. what is the significance of that? And uh, I thought Bhumtang was really known for being a meditational kind of a, you know, um, spot or a site. No, Miss uh, Singh, you are very much right. So this actually in this book, as I said earlier, uh, in this Bumtang, the center, the Royal Academy for Gross National Happiness is also being established there in my book. And later on, a GNS center has been also put in place in Bumtang. So as of today, we have a GNS center, Gross National Happiness Center. And as Miss Singh has rightly said, in terms of the uh, importance, Bumtang could be the, considered as the most important uh, place of pilgrimage. As Ms. Singh has said, it is a place which has been blessed by Guru Padma Sambhava in early, I think, 7th century. Guru Padma Sambhava is considered as the second Buddha in country, uh, in our country. Of course, uh, his origin is also from India, Guru Padma Sambhava. So there are a lot of secret, uh, uh, sacred sites wherein he visited. So a lot of temples. In fact, Bhuntan can be also or known as a, uh, a valley of temples, actually. There are so many temples countless. So the two uh, temples that, uh, I mean, the one specific temple which Miss Singh has just mentioned, uh, wherein most, I mean, is very popular that a, a, a pilgrim will be, you know, interested to uh, put the chains uh, on, on, on him or herself and then walk around. Now that chain was actually made by uh, another great saint, which came much later after Guru Padma Sambha, called Terden Pema Lingpa. And he again was born, he was a Bhutanese. He was born in, uh, in, in Bhumtang, maybe in 12th century. Uh, Guru Rinpoche came in 7th century, 
and Tetan Pemulingpa must be in 10 or 10, 12th century. So, and he is believed to be an incarnate, reincarnate, incarnate of Guru Rinpoche. And also, he is the king uh, amongst the treasure revealer. Now, Guru Padma Sambhava in, uh, in 7th century, all over the world, I think he is supposed to have hidden a lot of treasures all over. In Bhutan, we have so many uh, treasure sites. And Tetan Pemulingpa, uh, he was also born in Bhutan, and he has revealed many treasures that has been hidden by Guru Padma Sambha. So he is also very revered personality in Bhutan, and, and that temple is actually founded by the Tetan Pemalingpa in 10th to 12th century. So that is that is the story. And you are very much right, because as we as if I re, uh, read uh, more, then we are talking about this spiritualism and the JNS happiness. It, it's all going to come there. Okay, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, so, uh, I think it is my turn now. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, to introduce myself, well, I'm a retired professor of sociology from Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. And uh, I have uh, authored, co-authored and edited over 15 books. Uh, I've worked very closely with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And currently, I'm the chairperson of Punjabi Sat Sabha and the director of Tushita Mahayana Meditation Center. So I thank uh, Ajit Korji, auntie, once again for inviting me uh, to be part of the conference. Uh, I mean, it is amazing to see auntie's spirit, even at her age. I think she has more energy uh, than our generation. Uh, so... Auntie, it is very inspiring to see you uh, work uh, so hard, even, you know, in your ninth decade. So I'm going to uh, read from one of my favorite books uh, by Andrei Tarkovsky, the great Russian filmmaker, you know, who discusses about his art in the book called Sculpting in Time. Why did I pick up this book? You know, when I was a student uh, doing my PhD, uh, I think we were really impressed with his films. And uh, when I saw this book and I went through it, it was uh, a very moving experience for me and it has stayed with me. So that is why I have chosen uh, to read some excerpts out of his ninth chapter called The Sacrifice. This is a film that he made. The idea for The Sacrifice came to me long before I thought of nostalgia. The first notes and sketches, the first frenzied lines date back to the time when I still lived in the Soviet Union. The focal point was to be the story of how the hero, Alexander, was to be cured of a fatal disease as a result of a night spent in bed with a witch. Ever since those early days and all through the time, I was working on the screenplay. I was constantly preoccupied with the idea of equilibrium, of sacrifice, of the sacrificial act, the yang and the yin of personality. It became part of my very being. And all I have experienced. Okay. I was constantly preoccupied with the idea of equilibrium, of sacrifice, of the sacrificial act, the yang and yin of personality. It became part of my very being, and all I have experienced since living in the West has served only to make the preoccupation more intense. I have to say that my basic convictions have not changed since I arrived here. They have developed, deepened, become firmer. There have been changes of interval, of proportion. So too, as the plan of my film gradually evolved, it kept changing shape but I hope that its central idea 
remained intact. What moved me was the theme of the harmony, which is born only of sacrifice, the twofold dependence of love. It's not a question of mutual love. What nobody seems to understand is that love can only be one-sided, that no other love exists, that in any, in any other form, it is not love. If it involves less than total giving, it is not love. It is impotent for the moment. It is nothing. I'm interested above all in the character who is capable of sacrificing himself and his way of life, regardless of whether that sacrifice is made in the name of spiritual values or for the sake of someone else or of his own salvation or of all these things together. Such behavior precludes by its very nature all of those selfish interests that make up a normal rationale for action. It refutes the laws of a materialistic worldview. It is often absurd and unpractical. And yet, or indeed for that very reason, the man who acts in his way brings about fundamental changes in people's lives and in the course of history. The space he lives in becomes a rare, distinctive point of contrast to the empirical concepts of our experience, an area where reality, I would say, is all the more strongly present. Little by little, that awareness led me to carry out my wish to make a feature film about a man whose dependence upon others brings him to independence and for whom love is at once ultimate thrall and ultimate freedom. And the more clearly I discern the stamp of materialism on the face of our planet, irrespective of whether I was observing the West or the East, came up against unhappy people, saw the victims of psychosis symptomatic of an inability or unwillingness to see why life had lost all delight and all value, why it had become oppressive. The more committed I felt to this film as the most important thing in my life. It seems to me that the individual today stands at a crossroads, faced with the choice of whether to pursue the existence of a blind consumer subject to the implacable march of new technology and the endless multiplication of material goods, or to seek out a way that will lead to spiritual responsibility, a way that ultimately might mean not only his personal salvation, but also the saving of society at large. In other words, to turn to God. He has to resolve this dilemma for himself for only he can discover his own sane spiritual life. Resolving it may take him closer to the state in which he can be responsible for society. That is the step which becomes a sacrifice in the Christian sense of self-sacrifice. So should I stop here? I think maybe time is over. Please continue for two, three minutes. Okay. okay. Again, we are reminded of the dictum that our life here on earth was made for happiness and that nothing else is more important for man. And though this could be true only if one were to alter the meaning of the word happiness, which is impossible, neither in the West nor in the East, will a dissenting voice be taken seriously by the materialistic society? I posit that modern man, for the most part, is not prepared to deny himself and his interests for the sake of other people or in the name of what is greater, 
of what is supreme. He will more readily exchange his own life for the existence of a robo. I recognize that the idea of sacrifice, the Christian ideal of love of neighbor enjoys no popularity and that nobody asks us for self-sacrifice. It's regarded as idealistic and unpractical. But the result of our way of life, of our behavior, are plain enough. The erosion of individuality by overt egoism, the degeneration of human bonds into meaningless relationships between groups, and still more alarming, the loss of all possibility of returning to that higher form of spiritual life, which alone is worthy of mankind and which represents man's one hope for salvation. An example will illustrate what I mean about the prime importance accorded to materialistic interests. Physical hunger can be alleviated fairly simply by means of money. Today, we tend to use a simple, same simplistically Marxian formula, money is equal to goods, in our efforts to escape from mental deprivation. When we feel inexplicable symptoms of anxiety, depression, or despair, we promptly turn to the services of the psychiatrist, or better still, sexologist, who has taken over for the confessor and who we imagine calms our mind and restores them to normality. Reassured, we pay him at the going rate. Or if we feel a need for love, we go off to a brothel and again pay in cash. Not that it necessarily has to be a brothel. And all this despite the fact that we know perfectly well that neither of mind can be brought with any currency. I think I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Renuka Singh Ji, and uh, thanks to. Mr. Dorji also and uh, Madam Ajit Kaurji who is present uh, in this session. Uh, I hope uh, uh, this the discussion and uh, readings will be useful to our audiences. Though we missed very much Miss uh, uh, Januka Adirimanna Mohatti in this session. I request all the audiences for their within their circle through WhatsApp, Facebook, and Twitter. Kindly watch our other sessions also, which are being scheduled and uploaded on the YouTube channel of Sahit Academy. Thanks again. Namaskar. Thank you.